in oceans deep my faith will stand and I this song so we're just gonna try something chapel band has no idea but can we just sing that without the instruments the chorus one more time as we get ready for our speaker today mr. Bach is that okay with you I just kind of feel it's a good day to do that it's kind of dreary it's kind of gray and you guys sound great can we just do the chorus one more time before our speaker comes up today can you guys do that all right let's do it one more time And I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves In oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine that was awesome. Thank you guys for doing that. Our speaker today, great job, Travel Band. Thank you very much. Our speaker today, this applies to so well. 
can see in a stage of life that sometimes maybe the waves seem a little higher, but in a good way. You know him. He's a member of our community. You may see his kids here now every once in a while. Will you guys give a round of applause to Pastor Nyland as he comes up and shares today? I think I'm using that one. Here we go. Hey, good morning. How are we feeling this morning? Come on. I'll tell you what, I was, I wanted, I wanted the worship team just to keep playing. Like, let me, let me just listen to it. How many of you love the worship team, the chapel band worship team? They are incredible, and I'm a big believer, and especially as a youth pastor, I'm a big believer of youth leading youth, uh, because sometimes adults get irrelevant. It's hard for me. I'm in that middle stage where sometimes I'm relevant, sometimes I'm irrelevant because I'm getting older. Uh, but sometimes the jokes don't land, but I think I'm funny. So if I laugh at my own jokes, it's weird. So just bear with me because it's going to happen. But this morning I get the opportunity to share with you. I know all, uh, all year long you have this theme called I am. And how many of you have been enjoying, uh, that theme so far with I am? It's just, it's a big half of you. Good. This, this message today is going to be real relevant. Uh, and so, uh, we've been talking about I am, and it is a, a great beginning statement to understand who you are as a person, but who you are as a follower of Jesus, because God is described as I am. And what's amazing about it is that this morning, you are sitting here, in fact, a son or a daughter of God. So everything else right now, that title of where are my middle schoolers at? Where's the middle school section at? Come on. Uh, you are no longer right now a middle schooler. You are a son and a daughter of the king. Where are my high schoolers at? High school? You're no longer high school, right? You've, you've graduated. No, you didn't. But you are a son and a daughter of the king. And where are, last but not least, my faculty and staff? Where are you guys at? You guys can make some noise too. Come on. You guys no longer have authority. Just kidding. No, uh, but you are sons and daughters of, king, of the king, and that is what I am is. And this morning, I'm going to continue that same theme. Uh, and before I do that, though, I need to give some, some context of where I'm going with this. If we can throw the, the slide, we just had an awesome moment uh, as a family about three weeks ago uh, to welcome our third child into the room. Look at those lips. You can see sass all over that, right? Uh, Look at that. She's already ready for the camera. And Gwenly Jo Nyland, she came to us three weeks ago yesterday. Uh, it's been amazing. And the most consistent thing about babies is they're so inconsistent, right? Uh, and so we're so thankful. And so as, I, as I'm thinking about what I was going to talk about, uh, most of the good things that I talk about come from jokes. And so I was talking with Pastor Grant Lilly, uh, who's the youth pastor here at New Life Church. And first of all, I love Pastor Grant. I don't know if he's in here, but he's like one of my my best friends already, and we've only known each other for a couple years, and it's, it's nice when you don't have to compete, but you can share uh, what God's doing in a community, and so we were joking about something, and I was like, man, it would be so funny to talk about, because we're, I, actually, our daughters were born on the same day. We joked about how it would be cool if we were neighbors at Woodwinds Hospital, and essentially we were, uh, and it was awesome. We got Starbucks together, and we just, you know, as new parents, you're just like, this is exciting, but man, I am exhausted, right? Uh, and so we were joking about it, and we were realizing this is going to be a great topic. And so my topic and title for you is this. I am tired. That is what we're talking about this morning is I am tired. I am exhausted. I am thankful for Common Grounds Coffee Shop. I am so tired because if there is one thing I have heard as a youth pastor for years, hey, how you doing? I'm tired. I'm I'm just exhausted. None of you use this word, but I'm 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 weary right now. Life's got me down, and I've heard it over and over and over. And whether it's a real reason, whether you have a newborn or whether home life is stressful or school's got you down, you're one of I was not academically gifted. It took me a while to get it, and I finally got it. But something has gotten us to a state of, I'm tired. Now, some of you do it to yourself because you stay up till 2 a.m. watching YouTube, but I won't point out any names, all of you. 
But sometimes we're just in a moment where we find ourselves tired. And we find ourselves exhausted. And we look at a schedule of life, and you're saying, there is no gap where I can refuel. There's nowhere where I can regenerate. There's no place where I can say, this is my break time, and I can get back to the level of functionality that I'm used to at a full tank of energy. And if there's one thing I've learned of having three kids, that will never happen again in my life. Uh, and so I have a six-year-old, a five-year-old, kindergartner, first grade, and now a three-week-old. And it's, I'm never going to get sleep ever again in my life. Not the way I could as a high schooler. Not the way that I could as a college student. Not the way that I could as a single person. I'm never going to get that again. And so I'm looking, how am I going to get back to where I've been. And I've realized that you never get back to where you've been. In fact, I never want to go back to where I was. And I was thinking about something, and there's so many times where we have maybe said this phrase, man, I wish things were the way they used to be. How many have said that before, thought that before, hoped that before, right? And I've come to this realization that the way things that they used to be is the past, And I don't want to live in the past anymore. I want to live in the current. I want to live in what's going to happen. And I believe that middle schoolers, you're not going to be middle schoolers for very much longer. And high schoolers, you're going to graduate and you're going to go to something new. Do you truly wish you could be back in middle school? No, middle school is the worst. It's so awkward. I was chubby and I had a bald head voluntarily as a middle school. I would never want to go back to middle school. But we look back. Now, if you're wondering how I have so much energy by saying I'm tired... Commons ground coffee. I'm telling you what, it's beautiful. But I never want to go back. And I never want to look back on the past and think those were my best days. Because I truly believe, and as a church, we make this, uh, River Valley Church, we believe this, that the best is yet to come because of what Jesus has done. And so I want to encourage you, and I feel like I talk about it all the time, but I just can't let you miss a moment to say, when you get the opportunity to worship, It is not a spectator sport. You get the privilege of of coming into chapel every Thursday and have a worship moment where you're worshiping the King of Kings and the Savior that died on a cross for you so that you could have a relationship with the eternal God. And sometimes we just, for whatever reason, arms crossed, arms in pocket, stature of what am I going to get out of it? Let's... For the rest of the year, and I love that I come early in the year because I think, I think someone told me last, yes, last night that I'm always like around October is when I come and speak. And I really want you to just think of this for the next year of saying from, from here on out, I'm going to worship as though it is a honoring thing that when I lift my hands, it's not to show how spiritual I am, but it's saying I need the rejuvenation of God to come through my life. And I believe as before we really dive into this, that is how we take a tired society and we bring moments to give life to ourselves. Because again, the calendar will never line up for you to have that perfect Saturday. There will always be something for you to do. There will always be something that is going to take your time and there's always going to be something that's going to press a need where you're never going to get to just chill. You're never going to get to sleep in all the time. You're never going to get that opportunity to say, man, this is my moment where I can fill my tank up. And, and how do we do that in a busy society? How do we fill ourselves up? And I love what Jesus said in Matthew 11. It said this. He goes, come to me, all who you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I love that Jesus said this. He goes, you're going to find rest for your souls. And so many times we look for rest in our physical state, right? We're saying, Pastor, I'm not looking for much rest, just an average of 10 to 12 hours of sleep. That's not really that hard to ask for, right? But true rest allows you to feel energetic, allows you to be who you are because you're getting true rest for your soul. And when you have true rest for your soul, you can have moments where waves are overwhelming you. You can have circumstances that are going to feel like, how on earth am I going to get through this? But when you dive into the, the source, 
that allows true rest for your soul, you can look at the circumstance and go, ha ha, you got nothing on me. Right? I believe it because I've lived it. I believe it because I've had moments that should have done me in, but because I had rest for my soul, I was able to look at that and be like, you are an anthill, not a mountain. Let me kick you off, right? Some of you are like, how dare you do that to nature, right? (laughs) Illustration. But we take anthills and we make them mountains. We take things that are not a big deal and make them a massive deal. And when you have the right perspective and the right rest for your soul, you can look at any situation and say, well, we're ready, right? We buckled up, we put our helmets on. Some of you need the wrist guards, but we're, we're protected and we're ready to go. I once asked a, a friend, I said, hey, when you, when, when you face a trouble, how do you get through it? Because I, I knew I was coming to speak and I was like, how do you do this? And they're like, I breathe. I'm like, it's the dumbest answer I've ever heard in my life. And then I want some like facts. Like, give me, like, what are the strategies that you, like, give me the, give me the scientific strategies they have. You're like, I literally just breathe. Like, right? You're just, man. And I was like thinking about it. I'm like, I do this to my five-year-old. <laughs> Right? My son gets so worked up and he's right, the vein pops up in his head and I'm like, his name's Elijah. I go, breathe. And how many times do we take simple solutions and we're like, that is way too simple for me. But so many times we need to breathe in and we need to breathe out. Let's put it for our soul. We need to breathe in God's word. We need to breathe in moments of worship. We need to breathe in the times where he was faithful and we need to breathe out the garbage that is happening right now. The garbage that may be at home. The garbage that may be uh, in the peer clique that you want to be a part of but they won't let you in. The, The garbage that this world is always consistently going to provide you. You need to breathe that junk out. Because when you breathe in God's promises, that is when the rest for your soul happens because you're saying, nothing will overwhelm me. Nothing will overwhelm me. Jesus understood this better than most. He knew the importance of rest. And if the savior of the world knew the importance of rest, we need to understand the importance of rest, right? There was a great fad when I was growing up in youth group many years ago, the WWJD bracelets, how many remember those or still maybe have those? What would Jesus do? And if Jesus rested, why am I saying that I am over resting? Why am I too cool to rest? Why am I not okay with resting? If Jesus is saying you need to have time to replenish your soul, and so many times he would minister to people, he would heal people, he would have people coming from the roof uh, to provide sick people to heal with, and he would do amazing things, and even Jesus needed to say, I need some me time. Now he didn't Netflix, now he didn't go on Hulu, He didn't scroll the bottomless pit that is Instagram. He prayed. He soaked in the presence of God. He probably read the Torah even though he is the living version of it. He knew scripture. He had these times where he had to get away. And what was the importance of getting away? Was it so that he felt good? No, no, no. It's so that he could be more available to people. And if there's one thing I want to encourage you among the many things I'm going to talk about is if you have a relationship with Jesus this morning and you're saying at one point in time in my life I have prayed a prayer for Jesus to come into my heart and I understood that he is Lord, you have it. You have the gift that people across the world, maybe even people that are next door to you are looking for, but because you have expended yourself so much, you are too exhausted for the true need of the Great Commission. And so when we look at a circumstance that's saying, God wants to use you, you're saying, but I got nothing left. So how do you strategize your time, your day, to replenish your soul? I'll even say it. 
And I'm, I'm bold to say enough, maybe you gotta get up earlier to do your devos. Maybe you've been like, Pastor Matt, you don't understand, I'm a nighttime devo person. Great. So you've got eight hours to read the Bible, then sleep on it, and then forget about it, right? I know how that goes because I've been that too. I want to challenge you, like get a Devo schedule. How do you get into God's word? How do you know it? You got to take a time and it doesn't just magically happen. I've always been that person that's like, come Monday, I'm going to start it, right? You guys, anyone with me? Come Monday, I'm going to do this. Mm, Let's let Friday tomorrow, let's start our morning Devos. Challenge each other, right? We're, we're, we're friends all here, whether you're a sixth grader or you're a, you're a 12th grader or you're a staff, challenge each other, right? I love the verse that talked about spurring each other on. And if you're part of the uh, River Valley Youth, you, I've talked about this before. I've looked at spur, like spurring each other on is like, hey, you're doing a great job. You should maybe, maybe do a little bit better, right? Can you imagine a horse getting a spur? Have you ever seen the San Antonio Spur logo, right? It's sharp, little diamonds, and you spur spur a horse. The horse is not saying, oh man, thanks for doing that. (laughs) Spur it again. Oh man, praise the Lord, right? (laughs) No, the horse is like, ow, and it goes faster though, right? And so as peers, we need to spur each other on sometimes, and we need to have thick enough skin to know that if someone spurs you on, to do greater things for God, they're saying, this is uncomfortable because I'm getting challenged right now. But I'm trying to go faster. And my friend's trying to get me to go faster. It's so that we can be replenished to find those people who need Jesus. And that's what it's about. And that's why we need to, right? But after so many times, you're saying, I need to understand what rest is. We've heard the text. We know what He's telling us, he's like, come to me and I'm going to give you rest. And now I want to, I, this, I was, when I was typing this message, I was really excited about this because it's going to be super uncomfortable. And as a youth pastor, I hate silence, but we're going to do it anyways. Because I want to experience silence and true rest. So here's what I want you to do. Now you got to do it with me, otherwise we'll start over. And I was told I have till 1110, so I'll do this all time where there'll be zero flex time. So it's on you to do this, right? Yeah. I found out the facts, right? Uh, and so, so I want to experience for 30 seconds, and I'm going to time it, true silence and rest in God. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to think about, so here, real quick, you're going to think about the things that you're struggling with. You're going to think about the things that exhaust you. You're going to think about the stuff that you've allowed to be mountains that are truly minor. And for 30 seconds, everyone in this room is going to close their eyes. And I know that there's like three or four of you that never close your eyes when the person asks you to close your eyes. I'm asking even you to close your eyes. I, I see you, right? Uh, so I want everyone to close their eyes right now, right now. Close your eyes right now, right now. Even you, yeah, even you. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. All right. And for 30 seconds, we're going to be silent. And in that silence, I want you to mentally be talking to God and saying, God, I give you whatever you're thinking about because I know that you're going to give me rest. For 30 seconds, we're going to experience it. Ready? All right. And again, I'll start over. I have no problem doing that. So here we go. Three, two, one. Okay. For some of you, that was the hardest thing you've ever done all year, was be silent for that long. All right, bring it back, rub it back, rub it back. Now listen, that silence, if you did it correctly, 
that intentionality into coming to the Savior of the world and providing him the burden that he has not asked you to carry and to give him that thing should have been the most freeing thing that has ever happened to you this year. And now I'm gonna ask you to do it on your own. From here on out, when Jesus says in his word, and if you read his word, which some of you get graded on, if not all of you get graded on, you need to take his word and you need to put it not just here, because this does you nothing, and bring it here. And you, in the silence, bring it to him. I'm not even, I'm, listen, I don't even want to hear Waymaker from Leland playing on your, I, uh, on your iPhone. Be silent for a time. I don't want to hear the new Hill songs on your iPhone. Be silent for this next week in your quiet time quiet time. It's hard for me because I'm like, if I'm in a car for 30 seconds and there's no music, I'm like, oh, I'm so uncomfortable, right? So it's, it's a test for me too. And as I was getting ready for this, there's nothing worse than a, than a preacher telling someone to do something and them not doing it themselves. And so I'm going to be in this with all, all of you. And I'm, when I see, because I see, I see you all when I drop my kids off, I'm going to be like, how's your quiet time? You're like, oh shoot, you know? because you're going to forget. But let's be silent in bringing our problems to God because I believe that when we learn how to take God's yoke, where the Bible says take his yoke and let him take on the burdens, there's gifts that come from that. And there's four gifts that I truly believe that come from doing that. The first one is this, the gift of Sabbath time, Right? Now, I'm not going to go into any sort of, you know, do you know what the Greek root of Sabbath is? Because I don't know. Uh, but I know that Sabbath equals rest. Sabbath equals rest. Sabbath is a gift, and it's a day of rest. Now, it is not a rest like we are hoping for a rest, where it's a rest where we get to sleep in till noon, and then from the bed we go to the couch to watch Netflix or college football or whatever rings your bell. It's not a day spa. It's not anything in between. But a true rest day is a time of rejuvenation, a time of restoration, of time to reconnect to our lives, to the full aliveness that God has for our lives. That's what a Sabbath is. And so many times we look at a Sabbath as a day of laziness, but a Sabbath is a day to remind ourselves who we are. And that is, what did I say at the very beginning? That you are a son and a daughter of the king. And when you take that time, you understand how important it is to rest. It's a day to savor in the world rather than doing. We spend so much time focusing our time to have things to want things, to do things, but essentially we need to wrap our heads around to be. Just be for a day. Just be. Don't, don't think any title that you have now. Just be a son, be a daughter of God and see what that does for you. The second gift is this. The gift Jesus offers is release because here's what I'm gonna tell you and it's the most negative thing I'm gonna tell you today is it's always gonna be stressful. Life's always gonna be a little hard. It's never gonna get easy. There's just more things that happen. And when that happens, you need to get the opportunity to let go of stress and pressure. Now, Frozen 2's coming out. Really, that's the thing you cheer for? Uh, <laughs> Y'all know you're over the age of six, right? Uh, and so, but you all know the fancy song from the first one. I ain't going to sing it. You know it, right? See, you were ready for the thing. That's what it is. But, hold on. Thank you. In that silence, that is the time for rest, and that is the time to actually let go of that stress. Let go of that pressure. Let go of that thing that God has said in his word that you never needed to hold on to to begin with. That is the time to let go. And I think about this. Think of uh, an imaginary boat, right? You put a boat on, a, on, a, on the pond here at New Life, and you're just like, 
I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to put that over there. I'm going to put this in there. And then you just kind of kick the boat out. And that's what God wants you to do with the stress and the worry and the anxiety of this world. Put it in that dumb boat, kick it to the middle, pretend you have a flaming bow and arrow and burn that thing to the ground. Right? That's what you're supposed to do. And every day that you worry about it, you are ruining an opportunity for God to do something in you. And I love it because, again, in his word, Jesus said this, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble for its own. There's things that I love to do, to my, mostly to my wife, because sometimes I don't like to do the things that she asks me to do, just being honest. Uh, I'll say, that's tomorrow of Matt's problem, <laughs> right? That's future Matt's thing to do. President Matt doesn't want to do that, right? Uh, and in a marriage, that doesn't work out. But when it comes to the worries and the anxieties that, that this world has, that's not for you right now to deal with. Let tomorrow deal with that. Let tomorrow worry about itself. Don't let what's going to happen stress about you today. Juniors and seniors, oh, I got to know what I'm going to do as a 35-year-old. Stop. No, I don't even know what I'm doing, and I'm 33. Uh, like, don't let... The stress of things that you're not supposed to stress about, be stressful. Right? Who cares? It's going to work out. I, and I'm someone, my testimony is this. I wanted, to be, uh, I wanted to be one thing, and then it was a week before I was supposed to start this thing, and then I woke up one day and I didn't want to do it, so then I switched majors, and then that's what I am right now. That's a terrible plan financially. That's a terrible plan energy-wise. That's a terrible plan. But it's the plan that I knew God had for me. And so when I knew God's promises for me, I knew that regardless of what people are going to think about it, I knew regardless of what people are going to say, how much it's going to cost, who cares? It's just money. It's just cash. Right? You always have to pay for something. So let the stress of later, your future... Be a byproduct of your character and integrity now. That will preach, right? Y'all freaked out about Frozen 2, but you should have freaked out on that one, right? Let the future be a byproduct of your character and your integrity of today. Woo! Yeah? Thank you. Number three is this. The gift of the inner spring well, the living water. When we can let things go, we move debris from the wellspring, this inner wellspring that wants to flow freely. It wants to be let out, but you put boulders of anxiety, of problems in its way, and it was never supposed to be there. There was supposed to be a free flow, and it's like you blocked it. Put some dynamite in that bad boy and blow that thing up. You're like, you're very violent this morning. Yes, because I need you to understand some things. Number one, here's what I need you to understand. Probably 99% of the problems that you face, you have done yourself. Number two, we serve a God, no matter the mistakes we make, 100% of the time, he will bring freedom to it. But we have to be willing to own it. We have to be willing to decide to do it. And we have to have the ownership of moving forward in it. And Jesus tells us, I have come so that you may have abundant life and life to the full. Man, when you live a full life, it doesn't mean that you're going to be rich. It doesn't mean that you're going to be prosperous here on this earth, right? It means that you're living the fullness that God has created you to be, right? We know Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord, right? I know the plans, but when we don't live full, you're saying, God, you don't know what you're talking about. God, I know better than you do. That's a, that's a big thing, whether you realize that you're saying it or not, when you're allowing things to take priority, but when you let go of the stuff, you get back to the source that is Jesus and that is God. And the fourth thing is this, the gift of energy for our work in this world. And I love it because, uh, you know, there's times where we need to work on ourselves. We need a little us improvement. But why do we need us improvement? Why do we need to be the best version of ourselves? And I said it earlier, so that when we go out in this world, we can make an impact. God has not called you to be self-focused. God has called you to be kingdom-focused. 
God has called you to reach people in your world, right? If, have you heard preachers or have you heard youth pastors say, we're gonna change the world. I'm gonna tweak it a little bit. I want you to change your world. God has put you in a workplace that only you are a part of. God has put you in a neighborhood that only you are a part of. God has put you in a class that's only you are a part of. God has put you where you are and he's put a world around you. And so when we say, I want you to change the world, if God's given you an opportunity to go on maybe a mission trip or go across the world, great, do it. But he has put you here on the east side of the Twin Cities, wherever you lay home to, and I want you to change your world starting today. Change your world, because that is why we need to make self-improvement so that we can change the world around us. We all have personal leadings, specific callings that are going to continue the mission of Jesus. And, you know, time never slows down. As I said before, you're going to have moments to have many retreats and you got to be strategic with it. And I'm just asking you, don't all of a sudden blink and it's the end of the year and you've done nothing. Make an impact. What's the difference between New Life Academy and East Ridge or Woodbury High School? You got to ask yourself that. What is, now this is what we call a question that doesn't need to be answered, right? Uh, but, oh, <laughs> my bad. Uh, but let's think about it. Because I know the answer as an alumni and now a parent. I know the difference, but I'm not in it. You're in it. So let me ask you again without re giving me an answer. What is the difference between this private high school, middle school, school, and a public school? And I would love to know by not the words that you say, but the actions that you proceed with. Right? Jesus is still constantly going to be teaching us about wisdom, about how to handle gifts. And as we look back to those, it's rest the Sabbath, it's releasing the wellspring, it's the energy for the mission. And for all the purposes of an abundant life for us, we get to serve. Jesus still says, hey, you know what? There's gonna be times you're gonna be on the right track and it's still gonna be hard, but that's when you come to me for all those who are weary and I will give you rest. And rest is way better than sleep. And I can say that because I got about four and a half hours of sleep last night and look at me go, right? Right? True rest is better than sleep. When you have, whether you are, again, are a sixth grader or, or, or a staff, there are gonna be, dare I say, crappy days. There are gonna be days where you just, like you wake up already ready to go to bed because you know how what type of day it's gonna be. But when you have rest for your soul, you can conquer anything. And Jesus is echoing Psalm 23. He goes, the Lord is my shepherd. God, lead me beside still water. God restores my soul. Re restoration in your soul is the only way that you will get through this time period. When we get back to the place of genuine rest with reconnection to the wellspring of life that is Jesus, we can have rest. And so I want to take a moment to first of all, because I think sometimes the hardest thing is to admit, <laughs> I need it, right? But I want to take that moment. But here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to make you close your eyes. Because I believe those that are desperate for it don't care what people think. Because there's something I want to do with it. So as I'm talking, I have pinged so many of you <laughs> about you're exhausted you're overwhelmed, you are at wit's end, right? If, if the water of life was somewhere, you're, it's like here. And you're saying, I need help. One, admitting it, I need help needing support. I'm just gonna ask you to lift your hand, if that's you. If that's you, raise your hand. Don't be sad about it. It's ownership. Right? If you're saying life has got me and I, where I'm sitting right now, holy smokes, if you only have the time, right? 
There's hands every, keep them up, keep them up, keep them up, keep them up. Okay. So, if you did not have your hand up, keep them up, if you did not have your hand up, well, hold on, I gotta do this smoother. Um, if you lifted your hands, come to the front. Oh, yeah, come to the front. Come to the front. Come to the front. Come to the front. What's that mean? Quicker. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. There's space right here. There's like a weird gap in like a middle, to the middle teeth right here. Come on, fill the gaps, fill the gaps, fill the gaps. Keep filling, keep filling, keep filling. And if we don't have any more room, I want you to, no, get off stage, my stage, get off, get off my stage. All right, quiet down a little bit. Look at the front. This is people who are exhausted. This is people who are saying, I need to reconfigure where my source is. This is such a time period in our society that needs the source more than it's ever needed it before. And so we're going to get it. We're going to find it in Jesus. And so if you are sitting down, I want you to make somewhat of a circle around this circle. Well, it's not really a circle. It's more of a blob. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm getting direction real quick. Hold on. Because here's what's happening. Again, I said it before, I, I like pretexting my stuff. I love it when youth do youth ministry. I'm a 33-year-old irrelevant person, but you peers are going to pray for your peers. And you're going to ask and believe because you're telling me, Pastor Matt, I know my source. You're going to start boldly praying for your friends that have boldly said, I'm having a tough time right now. It's not a weird thing. It's something that we should be doing all the time. And so, if you're sitting down, you're going to start surrounding these people, and you don't know, you don't have to individually lay hands, but you're going to start praying. And we're going to do this for about five, two to five minutes. All right? So, lift, stand up if you're sitting down. I want you to form an echoing blob around this community. All right, let's do a little bit faster. Let's do a little bit faster. Let's surround. Huh? Well, you're coming here. Are you here because you're good? Or are you here because you need? Yeah, we're going to get direction. Yeah. All right, come on. A little bit faster. All right. All right, quiet down real quick. So here's what's going to happen. Listen. Here's what's going to happen. If you are in the circle to be prayed for, posture is everything, right? Hands in pockets is saying, I'm actually good. Pretend you're about to get a gift, right? How would you be on your birthday or on Christmas or anything else? You would have a hand of ready to receive, okay? So if you're in the middle of this blob, I want you to have your hands open like this or like this. You need to have some sort of posture of receiving. Because if you're not ready to receive, it's going to get passed away. It's going to move right by you. Because you're saying, nah, I'm actually fine. And I believe, hey, listen, this is not, listen, this is not a normal chapel time where you can talk through this. I believe wholeheartedly enough that I could come here and spark something that ever, look, look at the circle. And so if you're not ready for it, don't waste someone else's opportunity. But be in a ready position to receive because the God we serve is not just someone who's here only. He's the God who's omnipresent, omnipotent. That means he's everywhere and all-powerful. And if you're saying, you know what, I'm actually okay with it, he'll go to someone else. But I believe that this is a school that can change the worlds that you are surrounded by. 
but you are right now in need of help. And that is the greatest posture of strength to know that you need something bigger than you. And so I'm going to pray over the mic. But during that prayer time, if you're surrounding the blob, I want you to be praying your own prayers. Right? And I don't want, and this is the Pentecostal side of me, and I have zero apologetics to this. I don't want you to be like, God, I hope they're good. It's a great prayer. But I want you to boldly pray what you feel like God is telling you to pray. Some of you know people specifically. Some of you don't. We serve a God that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, above earth, and below earth. And that's a powerful name. Just say the name of Jesus over my friends. Jesus over their circumstances. Jesus. But put some, in, put some heart to it. And I'm going to pray. And then uh, I want you to start praying. Once I pray, I want you to pray. And if you're in the circle, I want you just to say, God, I give this to you. God, help me to, you know, use your pretext and your context to just give it to him. He's just asking you to do it. There's no formula. So, let, we ready? We're going to do it. All right, so here we go. So, outside group to pray for. Give me a thumbs up. You ready to go? Yeah? Great. All right, so here we go. Jesus, we come to you right now. God, we thank you for a moment like this where we could be exhausted. We could be tired. We could be uh, so overwhelmed that we don't know the next step. We don't know where we're going. But God, we look to your word today and we say, you said, come to me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But sometimes we reverse those words. We say, God, your way is so hard. God, this burden is so heavy. And he's like, no, 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 no. I didn't say you say to do that. I said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I pray for these hundreds of students, maybe some adults that aren't here, God, that are struggling right now. It is so hard right now. They can't get a win right now. But God, you died on the cross for not just good people, for not just religious people. God, you died for people who don't even know you yet. And that's the win we need. So Jesus, I pray right now. God, at 1054 on a Thursday in October, this is the moment that rejuvenation and refreshment and re-understanding of who you are happens in these students' lives. So God, fill them up. God, give them the encouragement. God, give them not physical rest, but eternal rest in their souls so that when they face their rest of their Thursdays or their Fridays or whatever they have going on in their future. God, they know where their source is. So we thank you for a moment in this long blip of life where we remind ourselves who you are to us. And that is the greatest father we could ever have. So help us to be the best sons and daughters because we know who our rest is in and that's in you, Jesus. So we thank you we love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, I love Jesus. Can we give a hand clap for who God is in our lives? For who God is forever? And I'll say this. I'll say this, and this will be my close. I'll, it, I don't care. Listen, this is important. I don't care if you go to River Valley Youth. I don't care if you go to New Life Church. I don't care if you go to Eagle Brook. I don't care where you go. You are a teenager. I am here for the community that I serve. And so if you're saying, but I don't go to youth group, can I, can I talk to you? Yes, you can talk to me. Yes, you could talk to Pastor Grant. Yes, you can talk to all of us. We are here for you. Otherwise, there would be other things that we could be doing. And we're here. God's here. God's moving. I believe that this is a, a mark on this school year that's going to flip the script of how it started. And God's going to do something incredible. So lean in and be ready for what's going to happen. Thank you guys. I love you guys. Hey, let's get hey. That's you. Hey, let's thank Pastor Matt, and then you guys can head to Flags. Let's give him a round of applause.